Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History. I'm Doug Phillips, and I'd like to welcome you to my place. Come on in. There's room for everyone, and I'm really quite proud of the place. The way it touches the sky. How it reaches deep into the heart of the earth. It sparkles. It flows. I love the way it is wonderfully, comfortingly quiet. And I love how it throws a party. It's a safe place for all things small and big, young and old. Yes, my place is something to behold. So come on in, let me show you around. We'll start with a look at the foundation and consider how the place has grown from there. We'll celebrate being here today and we'll consider plans for the future. Along the way, we'll discover that my place is your place, a place we can all call our own, Alabama State Parks. This program is about a land unknown to many people, a land that in many ways has maintained its native natural wonders, a place of bountiful backcountry, forests, streams, and wildlife more diverse than can be found in much of the inhabited world. Come along with me as we explore the wild wonders of this land. Come along as we discover Alabama. Welcome to Discovering Alabama, and welcome to Alabama State Parks. In 2014, Alabama State Parks celebrates 75 years as the place for all of us. Yes, I want to with the governor. I'm Dr. Maria Sullivan. I just moved to Alabama. I got involved with the state park system through a, a PSA that I did for him last year. And uh, being in Lower Alabama and being around Gulf State Park and stuff, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the park system. And then um, as things progressed and it looked, uh, looked like 2014 was going to be the year of the parks, that sounded like a good idea and this sounded like a good idea. You know, Alabama Gulf Seafood should be involved and this and that and uh, we ended up here and this is the kickoff. What I'd like to do at this point is ask Lee Sintel to come up and uh, introduce another special occasion that we're, we're here to celebrate today. Governor Bentley is a great proponent of rural and urban areas of our state. 
And so that's what we're here today for. I'd like to ask Bob Baumhauer to come up and, and stand with the governor as the governor makes this announcement. Come on up, Bob. It's my privilege to introduce Governor Robert Benton. Come on up, Bob. Can I show him my shirt? Show him your shirt. <laughs> this, is, this is my title now. The, the uh, park system team gave me this shirt. I told them I would wear it today, Governor. Uh, that's, that's a good looking shirt, Bob. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. It's great to be at uh, Oak Mountain State Park. I, I, I always love to come back to Shelby County. And I want to talk about something that I think is very important. I think was something we need to uh, really put an emphasis on, and that's our state parks. This is actually the 75th anniversary of our state parks. Uh, and over the next year, I want us to be able to share the natural beauty that we have all over the state of Alabama uh, in our parks. No matter where you are in our state, your park is not too far away. And no matter what you like in a park, you'll likely find it in your park any time of the year. I personally like to find the quiet places. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that I have anything against a little adventure, too. And if it's adventure you're looking for... Back in 1939, it's doubtful anyone imagined men, women, and children flying through the air in an Alabama State Park. The creators of the park system, however, were no doubt visionaries. The state of Alabama had received uh, as much as 6,000 acres of land over 11 state parks by 1933. And so they had the acreage. The 75th anniversary would be from the 1939 creation of the Department of Conservation. And that's when the parks, even though some of the parks by this time had been under construction and had portions open to the public for two or three or four years, that's, that's the big, that's when the Department of Conservation has been, that's when Dr. Walter B. Jones is appointed their first director. The problem was they didn't have the money to do anything with it because Alabama, like many, many other states at this time, was broke. During the darkest days of the Great Depression, there were those who envisioned a future in which conservation and recreation could support one another in preserving lands that you and I still enjoy today. But hard work had to be done to prepare these lands for the future. The Civilian Conservation Corps uh, was the common name of the emergency conservation work, which was a, one of the New Deal programs that Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, created uh, in uh, 1933. And uh, faced with unemployment and faced with a long history of resource abuse, he was able to address two issues at once by putting uh, veterans of, of, of the wars uh, and, and young men to work 
uh, in uh, areas of natural resources. Uh, so uh, the national forests, the national parks, the state parks, private forests, state forests, um, soil conservation work, they all got a chance to uh, get this wonderful labor force. So one of the things that the Civilian Conservation Corps was, was wonderful about was that it you did not require matching funds from the state. Other New Deal projects did. Civilian Conservation Corps, um, if you could put them to work, you could have them do the work and it would not cost the state any money. And Alabama was fortunate to get many, many projects approved. So when you go to the state parks, in uh, those that were originally constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps. You have cabins, you have um, the lodges, uh, the some of the portals, uh, entrance stations. You've got, for instance, at Chiha, you've got Bunker Tower, uh, the cabins, the lodge. Um, they, made the, they made the dams. And so, you know, to me, Another great part of going back, looking at the state parks at the 75th anniversary, looking at how Alabama managed uh, to, to get through the Great Depression uh, is also uh, a way of remembering what, what the guys that were in the situation, what the families in those situations, uh, how they dealt with it and how they got through it. The remarkable legacy of the CCC is still very much in evidence in our state parks today. From those humble Depression-era beginnings in 1939, Alabama State Parks have grown and flourished. That's the thing about Alabama State Parks, there's something unique in each one of them. In the beginning, of course, the parks were outdoor areas with uh, rustic or primitive campgrounds and things like that. The development in the late 60s and early 70s provided uh, a whole new world in the, in the state park system and a requirement for more personnel, more diverse personnel. And with that came uh, folks who were staying in cabins and motels and playing golf and things like that. So there are a lot of uh, diverse people, a lot of dedicated people. We have a very diverse system uh, within the state parks, the 22 state parks that we have. And, you know, you'll have an urban setting like this, despite the way it looks right now, you know, we're, we're right here in the largest metropolitan area in the state and well over a million people, you know, within a, a short drive of this park. You've got some parks that are a, a tourist destination for the people that come from out of state to enjoy a vacation here in Alabama. And then you've got some of our smaller, more rural state parks that are really utilized by the local community. And, uh, you know, for many of them, it's the best and closest public land. And, uh, you know, those rural parks are very important to Alabama and, and the rural communities of Alabama. The park's original goal of conserving special places while providing recreational choices for you and me still stands. And over the years, ambitions have expanded to include programs near and dear to my heart. Ah, right, you guys ready to go in the cave? Yeah! So what I'm looking for today, I'm going to try to show you a few bats, and we don't have a large population of bats in the cave, but I am going to be showing you bats. We also look for cave crickets. A lot of folks call it a spider, but it's not a spider, it's a cricket. We're going to look for a few of those. And sometimes we see what I call a cave salamander. They're very pretty, they're very difficult to find, they're bright orange in color, and I usually see them at the back of the cave. We are state parks, we're part of the, the state system and, and we work for the people of the state of Alabama and we need to provide them with a, an educational and entertaining experience. Right after I went to work in 1974, the park superintendent at DeSoto at that time, Doyle Benefield, is what I consider the, the father of the interpretive program in the park system. The Nature Center there is named for him and he was doing nature hikes and things like that before anyone even 
put a name to the interpretive program. You know, it's hard to say what's the most important thing we do, but I'm, I'm certainly one like you, you know, uh, had great experiences in Boy Scouts and I think that youth programs uh, for girls, boys, uh, young adults, it, it's so important. Uh, it's such a great opportunity to, you know, be able to uh, cultivate life lessons with young people. You know, we, we have a, a real treasure trove in terms of our natural heritage in these parks, the plants and the animals, uh, natural features, geological features. And I am really interested in finding other ways to communicate uh, to the public about all of that great natural history and natural heritage that we have in Alabama, not just in the parks, but in general because you know when you've got over four million visitor occurrences in a given year that's a great opportunity and uh, you know it, it's nice to be able to have that kind of educational opportunity not just for the kids that are there uh, but the parents enjoy the programs also and uh, in terms of what we do uh, I think it's so important to recruit young people to you know the conservation family and uh, the park system is a real opportunity to do that. But again, about five years ago, this area was hit with a heavy rain and it rained just about every day for a solid week. I kept coming inside the cave checking our water level. And finally, at the end of that week, when that little river quit rising, we had water inside this cave all the way up, right about here. Education, relaxation recreation. Our parks really do have something for each of us. And they are great places to invite those out of town guests. Our state parks are not just for relaxing for local people. They're also economic generators. People who come to our state say they are, that that's one of the number one assets of our state is our beautiful state parks. That's the quality of life that people from throughout the country wish they had. And we've got it here in Alabama and it brings people here. They spend money, they stay in hotels, they eat in the restaurants, they buy gasoline, they buy a little beer, and so they've left money in a community that maybe doesn't have a large industry, but it brings people here literally throughout the year. Alabama is blessed with the number of parks that we have. I think we take that for granted. Not many states have the, the mountains on the north end and beaches on the south end. Maybe we do take our state parks a little bit for granted. After all, they've always been there for us. Well, at least since the 1930s. They seem to be all over the place. They teach us, they touch us, they embolden us, they embrace us. Alabama State Parks, my place, your place. I think it's a great question to ask people, what is your favorite park? Well, I grew up in Clay County and uh, it was not unusual for me on uh, after school, is out at three o'clock, uh, to get my little Ford Falcon and drive up to Chihau State Park. We felt like that was our local park. You can see it feels like half the state from there. And uh, just the beautiful views that you could get, particularly in the afternoons, uh, looking across uh, Chihau National Forest. So I, w I was blessed to grow up in a rural area and have a state park so close by. You know, it, it meant a lot to me. I, I probably wouldn't be standing here today if I didn't have a park uh, there in Huntsville. And those settings and those opportunities to be exposed to, you know, nature and the great outdoors, uh, 
was probably what cultivated you know my interest in being uh, part of the conservation community and so you know I do think it's important and uh, you know it, it's a it's an honor that we run a park yeah. system as well as we do and as broad as we do where we can you know, give those opportunities to the public and to young people The thing about the, the parks and the people I know who run those parks and who manage the parks, the folks in Montgomery, the folks in the field, they're there because they want to do a good job. They love the parks. They enjoy doing the, the work that they do. They enjoy providing a service for the people of the state of Alabama and the visitors to the state of Alabama. So if you go to a park, be respectful of it, take care of it because it is yours and a lot of other people's. Alabama State Parks. Your parks, my parks, our public heritage. And what will the future hold for Alabama State Parks? As outdoor interests vary, as economies change, as politics shift, what new demands and pressures might bring consequences for Alabama State Parks? The future of this special natural heritage, our public heritage, is ours to guard and protect. Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History, the University of Alabama. This program is supported by grants from the Solon and Martha Dixon Foundation. The Alabama Wildlife Federation, working for wildlife since 1935. And 
the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, State Lands Division.